very same city that 11 years ago provided the backdrop for her crowning achievement as a collegiate basketball player. As one of the most decorated individuals in the history of women's basketball, Riley's career has embodied great success both on and off the court. She brought the University of Notre Dame to heights unseen during her tenure in South Bend as the 2000-2001 Verizon Academic All-America Player of the Year, capping her storybook senior season just down the street from here, leading the Fighting Irish to an improbable 68-66 victory over in-state rival Purdue in the 2001 National Championship game. Riley cemented her place in NCAA lore by scoring the final four points after her team had trailed in the closing minute of that final. That feat capped a stellar career that saw her establish school records for points, rebounds, block shots, and field goal percentage, marks that still stand over a decade later. The year 2001 was definitely a happy basketball odyssey for Riley as she was selected as the consensus national player of the year. Accolades that were followed by her selection as the academic All-America of the year. Oh my. <laughs> After earning her degree in psychology from Notre Dame, Riley took her talents to South Beach as the fifth overall pick in the WNBA draft by the Miami Soul. She returned to the Midwest as a member of the Detroit Shock in 2003. And just two years after leading Notre Dame to a title, she created the same magic in the Motor City, leading the Shock to the WNBA championship and earning MVP honors in the league finals. During her four seasons in Detroit, Riley led the Shock to a pair of WNBA titles and a spot in the league's all-star game. From Detroit, Riley spent the last five seasons as a member of the WNBA's San Antonio Silver Stars. And this summer, she's playing in the Windy City for the Chicago Sky as part of her 12th professional campaign. An accomplished performer on the international stage as well, Riley was a member of the silver medal winning squad that represented the U.S. at the World University Games in 1999. And in 2004, she reached the pinnacle of world competition by helping Team USA capture the gold medal with an undefeated run at the 2004 Olympic Games. A two-time Verizon Academic All-America honoree, Riley was appointed by President George W. Bush to the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports in 2009. She is also an accomplished writer, authoring a children's book, The Spirit of Basketball, published in 2005. The life of Riley has been one filled with high achievement in both sport and society. And tonight, we are honored to welcome yet another member of the Notre Dame athletic family, Ruth Riley, into the Capital One Academic All-America Hall of Fame. you're just glad that you've prepared the best uh, that you could as an athlete and you just kind of take over. You're just in a zone, you know, like basic free throw shooting right now and let's hope, uh, hope they go in. Do the same thing that you always do. It's really no different, right? Yeah, you've, and you've shot a million free throws in your career, so uh, you just kind of got to go through the motions and uh, stay focused. There's so many people in the Capital One Academic Ball American Hall of Fame from Notre Dame. What is the core value you think that you gained in your life by spending such an important part of your life at Notre Dame? Well, there's something special about Notre Dame. I think the, the family that it creates, um, for me, it was the balance of academics, athletics, and faith, you know, coming together, understanding the importance that I have uh, in the community, um, you know, giving me the opportunity to excel in the classroom and on the court, and 
there's just something special about that whole combination, I guess. So on the, uh, when you went back to Notre Dame in the video, the embrace with Muppet McGraw, uh, what, what's her, what's her relationship been like? What's her relationship with her been like for you? I have a great relationship with Coach McGraw. I owe a lot to her and just so grateful for giving me the opportunity to have a scholarship to go to Notre Dame and, um, you know, she was a coach for me on and off the court and I learned a lot of the four years that I played there and uh, just the time that she invested in me as a player and as a person. We, we all know Muffet, we, we know what she's like and what she stands for, what she stands for, and, and we also know Bill and Beer, who you played for. Very different. Now, yes. <laughs> how, how would you compare playing for Muffet McGraw and playing for Bill and Beer? Well, Muffet's a Philly girl, so there are little similarities there. She's got some toughness. Yes, I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> but Bill is, like I said, I was telling my Notre Dame counterparts over there, he's, he's smart. In both senses of the word, um, and I think that you know he's one of the most intelligent coaches. But um, he is what you see is what you get, and that's on a day to day basis. And sometimes it can be a bit much. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was working in Michigan and, and covering the business, one time the guy said to Thomas so bad he just he just punched him right in the back of the head. You ever punch Bill in the back of the head? <laughs> Have you ever wanted to punch Bill in the back of the head? I won't play the fifth. I will say yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to punch Muffet in the back of the head? Never. <laughs> I wanted to punch Digger in the back of the head. <laughs> <Sure> you <have. laughs> You're a psychology major. Have you ever thought of uh, taking Digger on as a psycho psychological study? That's <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think is the most important thing? for aspiring student athletes to try to balance their academic lives with their athletic pursuits? Um, I would think, for me it was um, just the way I approach life. Uh, you know, my mom is here and I'm so grateful that she taught me at a young age to set goals for myself, to set high standards, and to work really hard to achieve them. I mean, life's not going to give you a handout. And so she taught me to believe in myself and to keep working for that. And I think that you have to make it a priority to do well in the classroom, to do well on the court, and I think do well in the community as, uh, also. What keeps you playing? You've had a terrific career, you've won championships, you've won a gold medal, why do you keep playing? I get to play basketball for a living, <laughs> it's great, but uh, I do, I love the sport. I love every aspect of playing with the team, the, the community, the camaraderie, uh, the competition. Um, you know, I'm just very, very blessed. This is my 12th season, and you know, I'm, I'm just very grateful to be able to have this opportunity. We talked to Secretary Duncan about Title IX. We had a women's soccer coach up here going into the Hall of Fame as well. This 40th anniversary, what do you think Title IX has meant to you? It's, um, it's given me the opportunity to do what I do. And you know, my mom is here. She didn't have the opportunity to go to college or to play athletics, and so I think she instilled that in me at a young age to appreciate that opportunity, but to work really hard. And um, you know, I'm just very grateful. Now I do a lot of work with the young girls, and uh, just the opportunities that they have at such a young age. You know, it's tremendous. But we have to keep encouraging them. You know, to utilize those and to work hard and to expand on what they have right now. You mentioned that, that your mom's here. I've seen several other people around here. Do you have any idea why so many former Masters champions are here too? <laughs> <laughs> I guess Notre Dame has some great golfers. <laughs> now, all of the guys in the green jackets in the back, by the way, part of the Notre Dame Club of St. Louis. Gives you the, thank you guys. You guys are here for Ruth, right? All right. Thank you.